Oh damn, we are live again. Are we live again? We made yes. it. Whew. Yeah, welcome to Chaos and Amazement, where we explore the impact of digital technology <laughs> on our daily lives. <laughs> Chloe was too late today, and yeah. I was, I was, I was too late. Was I though? No. Because uh, it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was a very close call. But I'm here now, and we have a special <laughs> guest star today. Yeah. This is um, our lawyer, Wim Baseballs. Yeah. He's also the advisor, the legal advisor for Social Runners. Welcome, Wim. Maybe you can introduce yourself. Thank you. Uh, yeah, as Phil said, I'm a lawyer, also the legal advisor of Social Runners. Um, uh, present with Social Runners from the start, almost. Two years ago already. Is it two years already? Almi almost. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, indeed, 2021. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, uh, as a lawyer, I'm active on cases that are um, related to technology quite a lot. Um, it's also one of the focuses of our firm. We try to keep the focus uh, strict, or how you say it, um, because we believe that um, yeah, it does, you have to specialize a little bit to be able to, um, to um, assist your client properly. So um, yeah, we try to keep that focus and technology is one of Jan and mine uh, pet peeves or how you say it. So um, it's interesting, yeah. Nice. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is Chloe Willerts. And the phenomenal Phil Verheyen, of oh, course, the thank one you. and only. Thank you very much. <laughs> when they made him, they broke the mold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious this week, what do you have? Well, it's, it's good to have some legal advice with us here because uh, last time I talked about the state of Montana actually wanting to ban TikTok and, and even ignoring the fact that I really don't see how a separate state, one of the many United States, can enforce this kind of uh, law. Uh, obviously, TikTok, I think that was to be expected. They, uh, they lawyered up and started their own uh, their own suit against them. So what they say, TikTok says that Montana's TikTok ban, which will only go into effect in January next year, uh, but TikTok says that it's unconstitutional. So they always yeah. wait for their constitution in, in the United States. Um, and they want to protect their own business, of course. And I quote from the document that uh, TikTok filed, uh, this uh, Montana law unlawfully abridges one of the core freedoms <laughs> guaranteed by the First Amendment. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, what do you think? Are they just trying to slow down the state of Montana? Or I think in the United States, it's possible they will win the suit with the First Amendment. Uh, as um, there's a lot of discussion already uh, with regards to the, the freedom of speech and social media platforms. And there's quite a lot, I think it's legislation and um, jurisprudence uh, in this regard. Um, I'm not familiar with the, with the details, but um, I think, yeah, the, I think the, the law is actually unconstitutional, uh, or the proposed, no, it's a law already, it's right? It's a law uh, already, yeah. Uh, it's actually in unconstitutional, and the First Amendment is what comes to mind in that case, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think they they have, a, yeah, it's, a, it's a, the, the, the suit to go. Uh, what does the First Amendment say? Freedom um, of speech. Freedom, oh, okay. They drew the freedom of speech card. But what if freedom of speech I, is contradictory to protecting the privacy of children. Yeah, but yeah, you have to take into account that in, in Europe, I think it would be more difficult to do the freedom of speech card. Mm -hmm. um, but in America, it's quite a, a big card to pull if mm -hmm. it's uh, for, for, for cases as this. Um, but um, because the, the freedom of speech also in Europe and uh, the European Union, uh, it's, it's protected quite well, so um, I don't know what the the, the 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 reasoning is that follows the the big card. But um, yeah, when you restrict a, a media platform or a social mm -hmm. platform, obviously you're gonna restrict the freedom of speech. I see. People cannot do their free speech. Uh, have their free speech because you took away one of the 
uh, a medium to do it. Yeah. Okay. It's like blocking access to Google or a newspaper or some other information yes. source. Yes. Um, or by forbidding people to speak out in public, something yeah, like it's that. It's literally in the second paragraph I see. Americans use TikTok to express themselves and connect with others. Use TikTok to com communicate with each other by fostering connections, services, and then we go to three. So the TikTok ban or the ban, which prohibits the operation of TikTok, the state will probably, in one of the next paragraph, restrict Americans in communicating with each other. So it's a restriction of freedom of speech. And um, yeah, it's, it's a big issue also in, in Europe, but in, 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 um, in, in, in America and in the United States, certainly. It's Isn't it ironic that ByteDance is using this card? <laughs> yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's got clear Chinese roots where the concept of freedom yeah, of speech I, is... Yeah, but I also... Uh, was it in your subs... Uh, in the, in the, your text um, that um, they are... No, yeah, it's in your text already. Uh, they are giving access to Oracle. Yes, exactly. Maybe I'll let you explain. That was it, uh, my, my point. I was making fun of Montana last time because I don't think uh, state level is the right level to make decisions mm -hmm. of this uh, this kind. Um, so TikTok, remember that TikTok's uh, CEO, Xiao Chu, um, faced c Congress mm -hmm. for five hours and then still remained calm, even though all those questions were sometimes incredibly <laughs> stupid. It's always like that. And, um, and then they had to file some documents and, and uh, every week you kept asking, do you have any news on yeah. the ticket? Well, we have, we have oh. news now. It came as a surprise to some um, because the big winner in all of this is not TikTok or the United States. It's actually Oracle. Yeah. Uh, Oracle and TikTok are sitting in a tree kissing. Ah. Yes, and this might come as a surprise to you, but actually I drew a little timeline um, because it, it rang a bell. Remember, actually Trump already tried to ban TikTok uh, while he was the president mm -hmm. or the TikTok as he called it. <laughs> um, so he, in 2020, um, President Trump threatened to ban TikTok in the United States because of security concerns over its Chinese ownership by ByteDance. And uh, he tried to force ByteDance to sell its United States yeah. assets, basically TikTok in the United States, to uh, the U.S. government, which is weird because oh. ByteDance is, of course, a media company. And then why would the government yeah. own a... a but uh, from this in 2021 um, came nothing from his proposal, uh, so it kept dragging on. But then uh, two years later, uh, TikTok announced that it had started routing American users data to U.S. based servers, not owned by the government, not owned by ByteDance, but owned by Oracle. Okay. Um, it was a project Texas. I, I keep seeing like eagles soaring <laughs> over and, and waving the American flag and shouting but it's Oracle, freedom. <laughs> United States. Yes, it's an uh, American okay. company. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. it's one of those tech giants, uh, quiet yeah. giant, I think, mm -hmm. um, but they're they're still there. Um, so it's now Oracle's server. So it is uh, Oracle's uh, problem now. Uh, so actually, this whole five-hour debate. Uh, was quite useless because the process had already started to move U.S. citizens' data to um, to U.S. government mm. um, your Oracle servers, and so I think something similar is also happening in Europe, right? Because from a legal point of view, uh, the responsibility for the data uh, is linked to where physically the servers are based. Yeah, but it's a different. Uh, the, the 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 problem is different. Um, the problem with TikTok is obviously the, the, the involvement of the Chinese government and more importantly, the, the Communist Party. Um, and so it's more the security concerns um, with, yeah, that it's the possibility that they're spying on us uh, more generally. Um, and the problem in Europe is that since the GDPR, mm -hmm. um, you cannot transfer data from Europe to, for example, the US freely. There has to be some um, 
validated. Conditions that has to be yeah. uh, fulfilled. And we used to have privacy shield, but that was uh, considered invalid by the Court of Justice because um, there's a law in America and the United States that states that um, with the, the, the agencies, the, 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 it's probably CIA or, or FBI, I don't know. The NSA. Can, yeah, maybe even <laughs> NSA yeah, can, uh, can claim all the data, data of um, an American company based on, yeah, we have a terrorist or whatever, and they can review it. But obviously that is an unlawful, um, pro that's all unlawful processing of, of personal data. So because there was no consent. Yeah, consent is not the only law, uh, basis for for uh, processing, but um, yeah, the it was it's too wide of a, a, a basis. So um, the the court of justice said, yeah, obviously uh, that law is a problem. So privacy sealed, no more. So all transfers from data from um, Europe to America are unlawful unless another um, condition is met. And it's, yeah, you have contractual uh, po uh, possibilities with contracts and, and et cetera, but there's no general po mm. way to do it. Um, there's there's now um, a new privacy shield, but that's also um, possibly, that can, that, can, that can be attacked easily on the same basis as the last time. So that would be not be useful. Um, and that's why right now, Meta, and that's also in your text, I saw, uh, Meta is now... Um, exactly. It's 1.3 billion that they have to pay as an... Uh, as 1.3 billion? What right? are, yeah, well, oh, well uh, maybe um, 1.5, but who's counting? Yeah, who's yeah. counting? Yeah. Who's yeah. counting? Uh, as the, it's an uh, administrative fine uh, because of those transfers. Um, there's also... Uh, that's a quite an amusing uh, decision of a France... France uh, of a French judge who said um, that the web develop developer of, uh, uh, how do you say it, an opticien, uh, who sells uh, the glasses, um, the web developer was um, liable towards the uh, store because they developed the website mm -hmm. and they did not specify that they would um, put Google Analytics behind the website. You obviously need analytics. So what do, what do you do? You use Google Analytics. But Google has servers in Europe, obviously, since GDPR is quite important. But everything they do with regard to ads and analytics is transferred to the US and yes. they do it there. So those transfers were deemed illegal by the, the CNIL, that's the Gegevensbeschermingsautoriteit in French, in, in France. And subsequently, the judge said, okay, so you did not specify to your customer that there was analytics behind the website. Mm -hmm. And you did not specify that those analytics would be uh, conducted in the US. So your contract is invalid. You have to pay everything back. And the website it's offline or, or whatever. That's a very lame way to not pay your web developer. Obviously, because it was a lease. He had to pay monthly yeah. and he didn't and want he to pay anymore. To get out of the lease. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Mm. So well, now there's a problem with, because web developers are now liable, possibly, in France uh, uh, for least, now, yeah. at least, yeah, towards their customers that you have to inform them. Yeah, maybe there's some illegal analytics behind your website, but because they can maybe get out of it. It's uncertain right now if they inform their customer about it. I, I hear that some web developers uh, no longer want to use Google Analytics because mm -hmm. of the whole privacy issues yeah. around it. It's quite that's something I don't understand because uh, actually Google Analytics, does it actually identify unique users linked to their private data or do they only uh, look at them in, in cohorts? Um, yeah, that's... That's not certain. Google, we don't know. We don't know. That's uh, probably what the new version of Google Analytics is about, uh, the one that... Yeah, but I thought, I think CNIL, again, the, the French authority uh, already said, yeah, the new version is also not okay. Yeah, oh. but what I kind, uh, what I find fun, funny in this situation is that the government of Belgium, uh, starting a new technology company two years ago, one year ago, 
and they want to compete with Google and Facebook and stuff like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, sure. It's really funny. Uh, but if you read down and you need to consent uh, that mm -hmm. your data is used, every step you need to consent is Google Analytics. Yeah, Google, all the cookies Google. are Google, yeah. <laughs> so, but everybody uses Google Analytics, so if you're not allowed to use it or you have to take some steps to use it, yeah. that's... Uh, it's, it's, and it goes further because, as you see, Meta is also transferring data. Uh, it's not limited to to, uh, to uh, Meta because all the kids are right now on Roblox and uh, all other um, metaverses. Uh, the metaverses. Yeah, Roblox. I, I checked. Roblox also has no privacy policy that is whatsoever. And we're talking about minors. A lot of minors on. on yeah, Roblox. yeah it's, it's even minors. It's. Uh, I yeah. think the the age in Belgium that uh, that is uh, the, the the the. The average age. The, the, no, the, the, the in the law there's a, an, an age. I think it's 13 uh, years. That is like a, a border because for to have a consent of a parent, etc. And you can do some more below 13. It's a big problem. Above, it's still a problem, but a little bit less so. To, it's just I think the big discussion, and uh, let's let's pick OpenAI because OpenAI also had an interesting mm -hmm. week. And um, a couple of weeks ago, I was praying for some old man uh, to not turn into some evil person. Yeah. Evil. Evil. I'm not mentioning his name. Oh, no, God. Yeah, I, no. I, we are I just, 20 minutes far and we don't pay one euro to the charity jar. No. I don't want to give him any more attention. He's clearly a very attention-seeking person. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, I was well. looking up at Sam Altman and the way um, that he was able to communicate in a very clear and concise way about a very complicated matter, mm -hmm. even when everyone was becoming very nervous about AI taking our jobs and, and uh, <laughs> until this week. Because then I, I saw yeah. for the first time a glimpse of what might be evil Sam. <laughs> what, what, so real what, Sam, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe the real Sam. Uh, so what is what is the bigger con uh, context? And then I'll get back to what I think is the big issue uh, of today. Um, so uh, first of all, um, he also um, had to defend himself. It was you know very easygoing. Mm -hmm. He said, "Yes, we need a Regulation. we need a, a regulatory body for super intelligence, which." I thought was really smart because he introduced a new term called super intelligence uh, instead of general artificial intelligence. The word artificial doesn't help. It makes a lot of people very nervous. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and there, was also, there was even a, a blog post on, um, um, but it was not, not only him. It was not only Sam Altman. It was the other important people of OpenAI as well, like the president called Greg Brockman and their chief scientist, an immensely interesting guy called Ilya Sutskever. So it's basically the, the, the big brains at OpenAI said, yes, we need an international regulatory body for superintelligence. Says, yeah, OK, I was applauding that. Um, and, and, and I'll get back to what and who would be that international body. <laughs> but then Sam, um, um, he said that he has he he wants an international regulatory body, but then he says in the same week he has many concerns about the EU's Artificial Intelligence Act, the one that we already mentioned a couple of times, and he actually tried to blackmail uh, the the European Commission, saying that uh, OpenAI will try to comply, but if we can't comply, we will cease operating in Europe, and that sounds a lot like. Elon Musk. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what Elon Musk would say. Um, so um, my big question is, I agree with the big international regulatory body, but I've, I've tried to look up. It doesn't exist because mm -hmm. laws are always local. There are Belgian laws. There are European regulations. There are state laws. Um, and the only organization that I found, which has nothing to do with AI or digital, <laughs> that, that is acting in a, in a comparable international way, is actually the International Atomic Energy Agency, um, which has mm -hmm. the structure and ways to enforce an agreed upon planetary, um, let's just say, list of agreements, uh, which every country subscribes to. And that's the only one. Um, so, <laughs> what will this ever exist? I I think we need it, but an inter like a global for the whole planet Earth. Global is impossible. It's impossible. Why? 
uh, even within the EU, it will be difficult to have a text. And we have a parliament, is it? So we have a leg legendary legislation. We can draft legislation. <laughs> but then all within sorts the of EU. people have to vote on it. Yeah, it but it's still a democratic process within a, a, a continent. Just like in the United States, there is the possibility to have uh, legislation that is not local, like Belgium. Would be what, what, are go what are we going to do? But it's the EU and US, for example, have the quite an economic power. And they can decide how uh, they can guide the direction to go, uh, maybe. Um, but you also have China, and China is apparently also trying to um, regulate propose it, regulate it, and maybe even yeah, kill it. Uh, I put it to sleep right now. Um, and um, there's also um, yeah other countries that are obviously quite important um, or regions that are important. But to get all those opinions, the America and the US, uh, EU already differ so much mm -hmm. while we're the Western countries. Yeah, how we're going to regulate something when West, the Western con uh, countries already have so many uh, differences uh, of ideas regarding this, uh, the way of reg uh, regulating uh, this type of stuff. Uh, and then you have to get Asia on board and all the other parts of uh, the country, uh, the, the world that are even more less alike or un I, more I, differences. They're too different. But I think there will come events that will bring blockchain to the world, will bring a bigger war, AI, stuff like that. And I think there will become a day that we want to have AI as a president. I see this coming. Because it's, yeah, if, if there's a good data set behind him. <laughs> Nobody is happy anymore with our governments and stuff like that. Um, if you're going to cut off TikTok, for example, mm -hmm. mm. Gen Z will not laugh with it. There will become something else. But there is always something else. And... I think we are moving like it's the, it's like the time when God was born or mm -hmm. Jesus. I think we are now at this time frame now. AI is like the born of Je Jesus. There's a new time. That's what I'm seeing happening. But yeah, yeah, legal wise, it, that's it, legally that's it's a different story. Obviously, the technology has many capabilities, but I think like like Klaus said, it's important that there's some regulation. But it's the, yeah, there's difference in in. Um, the, the viewpoint between, for example, the US and the EU, how to do it. Yeah. The EU, EU will say, uh, like GDPR, we need to have a set of rules that applies to everything, maybe. Uh, it's not quite true because the proposal is not, does not apply to anything, um, which has value. But for AI, it's very difficult because yeah. there's so many applications that need to regulate, be regulated separately yes. that it's very difficult to define AI and then say, OK, this definition, this AI has to be regulated this way. Mm. I understand that it's very difficult. But on the other hand, leaving it free or for an organization that has no real power, yeah, that's also not, a, not, a, not an option. So I think it's quite good that the EU is taking quite important steps to go ahead and go for this uh, legislation and I think it's also a little bit of a blackmail to say we will cease operation I think just to mention because it's not just open AI it's all those other services built but on top of it yeah, because the, the API allows a company yeah. like Microsoft to include yeah, it we in, cannot in use Bing anymore then yeah. <laughs> that we, would be we a won't disaster use, for me we, we won't be using your boyfriend Bing anymore. yeah it's my, my study boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do a lot of things in, in March I think it, there was a, an open letter of Oh, for example, yeah. yes, our yes. friend Elon Musk. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> we, but, uh, we, we call that the lame letter. The lame letter, because but that was super lame. <laughs> yeah, well, well, oh, it's okay. But Sam Altman then said, "No, no, no. There's no need mm -hmm. for any regulation." And now he comes out and saying, "Well, maybe we do need some regulation." Yes. I think that's quite strange because before th then it was Chat GTP Chat GTP 3.5, I think. Mm -hmm. Four was coming. So yeah. it was the timing was not quite right, I think. Maybe he is deep down evil after all, and he was just buying time. 
maybe. That will be. Yeah, he's he's he, he was okay with the proposal from the EU until large um, uh, large language models were included suddenly yes. because they're yeah there there are some and dangers behind this. Then the mask fell this. off. Yeah, then the mask uh, fell off. Yeah. And I think he realizes as a CEO what the impact on the reputation of OpenAI could be because we mm. briefly mentioned this big fine that Meta got uh, based on its uh, transgressions of GDPR regulations in Europe. So um, I, I wrote a blog. I, I thought this is actually why Facebook is still, by the way, in the Western part of the world is still the number one social media network. Yep. It's still number one. Uh, so it is huge. It does have a lot of users. And I know most of them are over 40 or something. But there's a lot of people over 40. I mean, yeah. and, and they do have power and money and time on their hands. So it is an interesting user base that they have. And 1.5 or 0.3 billion euros, that's nothing uh, for Meta. They're yep. basically, you know. They'll feel it, but it'll, they're not, not, it'll sting. But that's all. Yeah, yeah, it's like a slap on the wrist, yeah. a very expensive one. Uh, but the thing is that um, if if you look at the stake of the real stakeholders, like the investors uh, in Meta, the advertisers, journalists, I remember that actually a lot of those stakeholders lost their trust in in Facebook, uh, and it all started with Edward Snowden. So I I wrote a blog post where we mentioned in my newsletter, Clovelarts.substack.com with a, a very brief overview of when the whole privacy Pro, uh, trouble began for, for Facebook. And I think the whistleblower Edward Snowden was actually the first of a very long, long line of whistleblowers and other scandals that have plagued Facebook a lot more than it has plagued the other big tech giants. I know that Google was um, also convicted in France, I think, last mm -hmm. year with a big fine, also a couple of millions, I think. I think uh, yeah, euros, but, yeah. Uh, and that hurt. Um, um, yeah. But but the others For are actually so. on Facebook. You can actually see with uh, so Edward Snowden and the Cambridge Analytica scandal uh, the way they used dark patterns to kind of hide from users mm -hmm. uh, how what 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 was being done the control over their privacy data. The the thing with Facebook when you look at the list that I made, there's a method behind this, and every time they will they will deny the fact that they're very sloppy with uh, the user yeah. data they and will afterwards. deny it. but uh, the fifth time they're denying it um, a, a completely different allegation but still linked to privacy data those That's were also fun hearings with Mark Zuckerberg yeah, yeah but he didn't do well oh uh, no he was a robot uh, com <laughs> compared to TikTok's uh, CEO uh, Xiao Zhu and compared to Sam Altman they were uh, charismatic they were good uh, they were trained I think they got yeah, a very Mark decent Zuckerberg media well. training but he also got some, yeah, they, they always get stupid questions, obviously. But That's incredible. It's, uh, did, did you see the one with, of Google, the recent one? Oh, no. Did Google had some the, hearings, the, too? Yeah, I don't know which one. I, I saw a snippet of it, and uh, there was the, also the CEO. Um, what's his name? No, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, one of the senators, uh, I guess it is, uh, was asking, so now Google knows where I am. Oh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, And he was like, yeah, it's, Maybe if there's, there's some a, parameters, and, and he tried to give a, a good answer, and so so I conclude Google knows where I am. So oh my, it's, it has to be frustrating to be in that seat at that moment, I guess. So, <laughs> so when when you become the CEO of a big company from a certain level, you just have to train for being able to keep your you know, yeah, 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 yeah. lose your shit or start sweating or. Uh, when you're being interrogated by, pe by people who have power, but absolutely no idea what your business is No about. idea. Yeah. So this is different. This is a different world from being able to withstand the questions from a journalist, because usually journalists don't go on for five hours. Yeah. You're not being grilled for five hours by 20 different journalists. But maybe if it's 20 minutes and, and they're really good questions, it can be... And then you can still go internally like... Yeah, or you could start sweating more even than the five hours of stupid questions. Yeah, there That's are some examples of that. Uh, so it's interesting. It's the gift that keeps on giving. The whole relationship between legislation and, yeah, yeah. and the development of uh, of artificial intelligence. Uh, meanwhile, TikTok in itself is like soldiering on. Um, their you know, uh, their communication department is actually pretty good because they come out with the type of. Another, country, uh, an, another company would come out with simply new features, mm. now also with 
uh, more, Different. I don't know. Yeah. Privacy mode. Yeah, now, we privacy have, mode no, now we have servers in America. <laughs> TikTok just digs into their deep knowledge of their own community and then writes a press release about how they enforce what is already an understream uh, in a lot of ba a community within the community of TikTok mm -hmm. in itself. And then one of them that I also mention in my book, Video Marketing Like a Pro, is BookTok. Oh, yeah. uh, BookTok is, is, is great uh, and unexpected uh, because it is, uh, we, we think of TikTok as the 15 year olds who just enjoy silly dances and, 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 you, know, and you know, keep reacting to each other until you get this very bubbly mm. thing. Uh, but there's actually, BookTok is actually pretty, pretty big. And now TikTok UK, I think, uh, had a partnership with Penguin Random House, which is one of the largest uh, book publishers and one of the oldest ones, I mm -hmm. think, too. Indeed. Uh, and they're losing the TikTok Book Awards, and I really like that. It's uh, yeah, I think the world needed that Book Awards, and uh, um, and they actually look pretty good. Uh, so one of those books, and I oh, I forgot, but um, there are actually books that are not, let's say, classic literary works. Um, they're a little bit in the fringe, uh, but they still become a bestseller, not because they were mentioned in the New York Times, but because they're mentioned, but because they're mentioned on, on BookTok. And then uh, one of them I actually uh, read, uh, they both die I at the end by Adam Silver. I actually bought that one a couple okay. of months ago. After I'm not BookTok on TikTok. Or no, but it, it started on TikTok. It's like music. Yeah, but you saw it on TikTok and then you bought it. No, I'm, no, not, I'm not on TikTok, but that's that's my point. So sometimes a song goes viral on TikTok, uh, like Old Time Roads. Um, it, it starts on TikTok and then there's this overflow to mainstream media. And, and yes. that this is also happening with books warms my heart. <laughs> Um, because it's been since the Harry Potter books mm -hmm. that a very young audience suddenly becomes interested in talking about books and whether it's thought about the book and then involve the authors, etc. So, but to me, it, it proves that that TikTok knows to buy dance. They know very well what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just the CEO who is able to, you know, be charismatic, be charismatic and, and do his job well as a representative of the company. It's also the whole communication department is uh, I, I admire. Um, I admire what they're doing, because when when you're in, in you, you could just as well panic and say we're all going to die or lawyer up and remain silent. But they divert the whole discourse uh, yeah. from evil AI to look at what, the, you know, <laughs> this is like the sunny side of our community and we're actually right. having a positive impact on, uh, on society. You, I liked it very much. Did you see the problem with uh, the popularity of songs on, on TikTok? There's a, there's a, uh, it's a problem, it, I think it's uh, the wrong word, but there's now people that go to concerts and the, the part that is on TikTok, mm -hmm. they know it's by heart and they're singing along and oh, then the song continues and, then the song continues. and then suddenly <laughs> the entire audience is silent <laughs> and then the singer is still standing there with his mic and, <laughs> and also the, the length of the songs is, uh, yeah, is, yeah, is the diminishing yeah. because uh, so uh, but that was that's actually a very old discussion because yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, when, when vinyl came out and it started uh, with jukebox for example they needed smaller discs <laughs> so that it could fit more in, in this one jukebox. Uh, and that's why songs, pop songs in the 1950s and 1960s were like two minutes long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because that's when the vinyl ran out on, yeah. on, on, this, on this format. So it's not the first time that how long a song is, is defined by the format. But it's funny that now, <laughs> even in, in live concerts, people will just go from one clip to the other. This is what our popular culture has become. Yeah, indeed. It's shorts. Yeah, it's clips, it's outtakes. Uh, so your concert has to be clips as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I, I think well, it's hilarious. I went to Chris Brown, uh, I think a month month ago, and he had something like also TikTok, and you can choose between the three songs. So yeah. it was like, oh, you want this song? And okay, and then it was like snippets of like forty seconds each, and then it was really quick. Choose one. Oh. 40 seconds, go, go, go. So he's like a human jukebox yeah, on he stage. Has, he has over 100 songs, so a lot to pick. Yeah. Oh, I see. I would, I would hey, you have to re reinvent yourself to keep... Uh, it's really uh, smart, yeah. Um, I, I want to mention something else, which for me was a sign of the time, uh, about deep fakes. It, I, it, uh, it took a while. Um, before we, every week we say, yeah, of course, deep fakes, they're very dangerous. And then sometimes people will not notice 
that it is a deep fake and remember usually say we have to raise awareness about you can see the difference between a deep fake and, and another one um, but now it's actually more painful because um, as you know <laughs> the whole verified accounts blue twitter blue thing Check mark, yeah. on twitter um, ironically makes it easier for uh, an organization or per persons faking to be an official organization and then yeah. and then spread uh, fake news so there was this twitter blue so from the looks of it verified account called bloomberg feed it had nothing to do with Bloom bloomberg whatsoever but it had a blue tick because they paid for it yeah and uh, this account uh, published a, a, a deep faked uh, picture of course uh, with a text and and this is this is where if you I'm, I'm gonna read the text and if you haven't seen it this is where you go like oh shit. so the text with this deep fake picture was large explosion near the Pentagon complex in Washington DC initial report and uh, and then there's this picture of, of a part of the Pentagon with some you know very black clouds and appearing that we so first of all, this is a you, Twitter is where breaking news breaks. Yeah. Twitter is also where journalists will go out and search if there are any yeah. other points of view, witnesses, stuff like that. So journalists are one of those three groups who use Twitter as a search engine, and and journalists uh, use it basically whenever there's breaking news to get alternative points of view of of the same. Uh, so that's that's really dangerous. But then secondly. 9-11 uh, is, is one of the biggest traumas of, of the United States and, mm -hmm. and even a big part of the Western world. So it, it will immediately trigger people. Yeah. They, they will see these, these type of pictures and then they will just skip the whole rational process and go yeah, straight yeah, to the fear. You're the, back in 2001. A, yeah. very, a very powerful emotion is fear uh, because it paralyzes people. They stop thinking and what they do is they panic and then they will share this news, which is obviously fake. And, um, and, and Twitter is not organized any longer no. uh, to to handle this type of fake news from spreading i think facebook currently is a lot better organized uh, mm. specifically to stop fake news from spreading um, um so for me this is uh if it wasn't painfully clear enough what what a particularly bad idea twitter blue was uh, i think uh, at bloomberg yeah. feed it's clear now yeah <laughs> it's now clear to everyone give um, Chloe her blue tape back please yeah, I'm, I'm still. I, I'll just. I'm still a little salty. Um, <laughs> I judge. I judge people uh, in my feed, but I. I also had a look at my Twitter analytics, and um, so um, usually when I tweet something, it's like 500, 1,000 views, mm -hmm. and a little bit of engagement. On Twitter Spaces, I had like 12 people listening in, um, and then since two months, ever since I lost uh, the verified mark. Um, it's it's half or one third. Oh, yes. So the same frequency of tw of tweets, the same format of tweet, the same content, same amount of followers, uh, but only a fraction of the engagement. You lost your credibility. Yeah, completely. <laughs> kind of. Yes. Right? And and then of course the feed for me the quality is going down because yeah. I'm, I'm the priority is given to tweets for motherfuckers who pay for Twitter. <laughs> Um, and, and why th these are people yeah. that are actually paying to get heard, but they don't necessarily have yeah, something interesting this, yeah. to say. Uh, so remember, remember this, uh, this day, it, it was the 22nd of March, March, um, at Bloomberg feed, a verified May. account. Did I say May? Did I say March? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, the 22nd of May. Thank you very much. No, no problem. Um, uh, the 22nd of May 2023 was the first time that uh, um, a very faked, deep fake pictures went viral on Twitter and fooled a lot of people. Um, yeah. Well, I want to bring some fresh AI as well. Um, and you know that I'm particularly interested in um, in AI related to generating videos and editing videos because that's what you know, our community is about on, on socialrunners.com. So there was this, um, this, this one I didn't see coming. It's mind-video.com. Uh, so mind-video.com, a new AI tool. And I, I wasn't able to use it myself because you need an, an fMRI machine for that. <laughs> so a machine that scans your brain waves. But what the, the service uh, claims is that they are now able to generate realistic videos from your brain activity while you're inside the fMRI scanner. And what, what, what is your, yeah, what, what, 
<laughs> if they would put you like a healthy 30 something um, male and they just roll this guy any male not not just a healthy male yeah. they roll this guy inside the fMRI scanner what type of video do you think would generate <coughs> your blushing um Bambi yeah. <laughs> yeah. Phys he's physically blushing yes yeah. but you know what I'm getting <laughs> yeah, at yeah, right of course, yeah, yeah. and and uh, I can't imagine of course there's the medical application and this is great if for some reason someone isn't able to express themselves um, like with this famous locked in syndrome where you know there's still brain activity but no mm. way to mm -hmm. express themselves through through words or gestures that's of course fantastic but I'm guessing that not a lot of people would want to be inside this machine and have someone actually yeah. watch what's inside this head a yeah. TV version of their head because I don't yeah. think I want to see the consent forms then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but still, I'm, even I um, and and as you know, I am I am I'm an angel basically. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a, yes, a strict Catholic and very pure. <laughs> um, but uh, even I would not consent to uh, to have my brainwaves translated because there are some thoughts. I think thoughts. That's the that's the final frontier is your internal monologue, for example, your thoughts, <laughs> they are there. Yeah. And uh, they can be very, very intrusive. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it's hard enough for me to keep myself from speaking my <laughs> thoughts. That's that's <laughs> landed me uh, in trouble a couple of times. Just imagine. Yeah, you know, of course. But I think ten, ten, ten years, years ago, there was a program on Discovery Channel, Channel Futurescape, Futurescape, it was mm. called. And there was also a section where this was coming up in the future we can read minds by images and videos and there was for as an example for uh, criminals uh, oh. who kill someone to do uh, actually see their thought either their yeah. memories yeah yeah to see the memories. it's like a lie detector like a lie yeah they are asking questions and because it recalls the event. Yes, it, it came up on the stage. will see a true psychopath would still uh, would yeah. still pass oh, this test. I'm course. pretty sure. True crime. <laughs> I watch. I watch a lot of true crime. The lie detector is is. Yeah, but one are... of the weirdest things. It's it's, 100% bullshit. Yeah. Because you can train yourself to lower uh, your breathing, yeah, the, the, your, the markers, your heart yeah. rhythm. So all of the markers. You can train for that. Yeah. Um, so if you're serious about your crime, obviously you train for that. And then every time, so I watch like uh, hours of, <laughs> of true crime and I listen to true crime podcasts. So every time they say it's not admissible in court, but, but they, they just it. do it to mess with the criminals because it makes yeah. them nervous. The idea of, of being subject to a lie detector that makes them nervous. And then sometimes they confess. Yeah, but it's, a, it's, it's certainly in, a, in the United States, they still, I, now less, I, I assume, but they would still use it yeah. and say, yeah, but he lied. You can see it in the, uh, the graphs. And then the jury would say, oh, yeah, he lied. Oh, um, he, is the, he is the murderer. Oh, the jury could be influenced. Yeah, in obviously. Oh, and if you have images, what so would then be possible? Even, even you just play an image and it's a murder uh, and it's, it's that says reconstruction on the mm -hmm. bottom, like it's as a like dramatization, is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, then you watch a lot of true crime too. Yeah, my wife loves it, so oh, I, 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 I watch along. My wife loves true crime. But careful, yeah. because she now knows a lot uh, of creative ways on how to hide a body, which I think is the hardest part. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the killing, it's hiding, the getting there rid of the body. There was one Belgian serial killer who, with chemicals. chemicals. Oh, Pandi. Pandi. Yeah. Pandi. Yes. Yeah. He he dissolved them in mm. uh, fats of acid. But yeah. then you will still get like the, the tooth fillings yeah. and, and other stuff. Anyway, we're getting too specific. <laughs> I don't want to raise any red flags with whoever from the government. And for now, it's true crime with cool Like I said, <laughs> um, I, I am a pure soul. Um, anyway, AI. So, um, of course, there's um, AI Scout.net is uh, another one of those. Um, website that collects that points to uh, AI based services and it is pretty good it's not the first one that I mentioned one like that but AI scout.net I like the interface I like the quality and the volume of AI sources that it mentions because then and this is interesting for our community at social runners 
Uh, you can see uh, all of the video related AI services. And that's how I discovered another thing to play with. Remember when I discovered CapCut and then told yeah. everyone to go out and play with it? And yeah. I play with it as well. It's a great tool, also owned by Bytans, I know. But mm -hmm. it's some of its features is are indistinguishable from Magic. But there's another one that I discovered. It's called, it's CapWings AI video editor. You probably already know CapWing. No. no, you don't. No. Um, CapWing with a K. Yeah. Uh, was actually the service that, that um, I used uh, already a couple of years since 2018, that's when I used it for the first time, is uh, for captions. Mm. Capping was one of those tools uh, uh, that you use for. So it's been around in, in the video editing uh, world for quite a while now. And now uh, they also have an AI video generator, which is still very much in beta, but I liked it anyway. It's, it's, uh, so what you have to do is text to video, uh, up until now, I was um, looking at Runway. Remember RunwayML.com, uh, which already has some also very primitive, but very fascinating text-to-video mm -hmm. uh, AI features that it offers, but for very short clips, 10 to 15 seconds. And now Capping also offers them. Um, so it, it will create video clips, subtitles, background music, and transitions. Um, so if you're in the video industry, I highly recommend uh, looking up Capwing, Capwing's AI video editor. Um, it's not completely foolproof, but I compare it to Lumen 5. So Lumen, L-U-M-E-N, and then the number 5.com. That's another tool that I've been using also since 2018. Um, it also offers text to video, but it will, it will look up stock video um, and, and then create like different scenes, stitch them together and then have some, you know, um, uh, so it doesn't create the video itself. Yeah. It creates like uh, the, the scenes yeah, yeah, yeah. and then includes uh, some of the stock oh, videos nice. that it already has. That's what Lumen 5 does. Also, but Capwing actually creates videos from scratch based on your, uh, on your text. It does have some limits, but I highly recommend mm. playing with it. Okay. There's also Described. I don't know if you... Which one? Can you spell it? D, D S, C, R, I, B, E, I think. Or it's also with an E after the D. So I don't know. But you need you to already lost me. D, <laughs> D, D, scribe. Yeah. Yeah. Script. Text to video. Script, but then with a D. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I see what Ooh. you mean. Yeah. <laughs> That's also a good one. But it's only you can... You can input your video and then it makes text mm -hmm. what you are saying. And then if you do enter, that's a cutoff. Yeah. Like this. Yes. yes but yes. they also have stock video and AI at this moment. So. Well, Capping, same thing. So yeah. Capping also still has, it behaves a little bit like Canva.com. Mm -hmm. uh, Canva mm -hmm. now, uh, it's the, the, the interface, Canva's interface is becoming a little messy, but I understand it just includes so many features now. Mm -hmm. Um, but Capwing is actually evolving into what I was looking for. And I'm mm. seriously con considering uh, stopping my premium account with Lumen5 because it's it's rather expensive. Lumen5 is a couple of 150 euros a month or something, so it's not cheap. Whoa. Uh, and replace it with Capwings, even though Capwings is, is very much in, in beta. Oh, but oh, I'm not a professional video maker. It's just that I'm the type of target audience that Canva also taps into. Mm -hmm. So Canva is like for the amateurs, uh, the, the real the real video editors obviously use Final Cut Pro or something like that. But um, for this this layer of people just underneath, uh, who are also willing to pay something like 50 to 100 euros a month, if it makes their video creation job easier. Mm -hmm. I hear from my community, everybody's going to Da Vinci. Yeah, and because it's, it's open source and free. Yeah, but not only for that, because Premiere Pro is a lot of lagging. Mm -hmm. uh, Final Cut Pro is also not Very heavy that ended, good. Yes. And everybody, yeah, I now use DaVinci. Oh, okay. And they keep updating, right? So yeah. DaVinci Resolve uh, keeps coming out with new versions. I think they're now in 10 point mm -hmm. something, which yeah. is a very high uh, yeah. number for versions. So that means that they keep innovating and that's a good sign. I also think they're very good at uh, keeping in touch with their community and then that, that they know, just like TikTok does, they, they just know what makes them tick and then yeah. comes out with new features. Uh, remember the last time you were creeped out by one of those robots, the one, the British one called Amika? Uh, so Amika, maybe, um, she's the one that's very good with facial expressions and then we talked about uh, 
<laughs> that popular robots don't bother about having a face because yeah. it creeps people out. The more realistic the face is, the more they get creeped out. Yeah. And I was intrigued by that. But you were really, you know, you you would you wouldn't want Amika to be here in this room, right? You just you would just walk out. No, I, I yesterday had a meeting with the guy who was involved with Sophia. Oh yeah, that's another one. But she's she's ugly. Yeah, Amika is creepy, yeah. and Sophia is just very ugly. Yeah. They they say her face is based on Audrey Hepburn. I said no, it's absolutely <laughs> nothing in common with Audrey Hepburn. Amika is like uh, I robot, I think. Yes. Uh, design. Yeah. yeah, smooth, yeah. smooth yeah. face. Uh, but I actually, um, I, you know, I I enjoy torturing you. <laughs> I thought let's let's have a look in in the history of robots that are humanoid robots, real, actual, real human uh, humanoid robots. Uh, of the past, let's say, 15 years or so, wh which ones which would scare Phil the most? And um, um, I was helped by um, a website. Yeah, maybe maybe we should have a look. Um, I was actually helped by a new index of uh, robots by a, uh, you have to scroll down a little yeah. bit. Yeah, the robots guide by the uh, IEEE and uh, Robot Guide is actually a very interesting website because it has the most popular robots um, and uh, but I picked obviously the creepiest robot so they're determined by by votes and then the creepiest robot is the one called Telenoid and it's already from 2010 and uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, wow yeah it's the stuff of nightmares because it looks like it what tries it to have a human body, but stopped somewhere in its development halfway. Yeah. And what um, can it do? Um, it it can it yeah it it was developed to replace um, d during phone calls, so that someone makes a phone call to you, and then this robot would kind of move with the voice and try to mimic. So the idea was pretty good. If, when you're having like a this was 2011, right? So. Yeah. 2010. Um, instead of talking into like your phone, uh, you would talk to this thing, which represents so. the person who's trying to call you. Uh, the result, however, was the stuff of nightmares. But that's not the one that I picked to scare you. Um, there's, uh, I think it's my my favorite um, is uh, is number five. Uh, number five is called uh, Floby. Floby. Uh, Floby is uh, also from 2010, so I think that was good like year. the high point. <laughs> yes, a good year. Um, and uh, so this this Floby thing, it it does have. So I'm 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 a big fan of of robots, but it's, there's <laughs> something in this face, <laughs> and the lips, especially the lips, are really 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 bad. It makes you just want to uh, run away really hard and scream. So the lips are the, the lips is I think. The good thing is that they have eyebrows. So that's good thinking. Oh, changing masks. Um, but <laughs> no, like story. yeah, they're just, the yes, they're dismantling it uh, in the video that we're looking at. And it's getting worse uh, with every f with every new scene that they're talking. They're trying to explain how it works, but they, they only make it work. <laughs> um, so this is, um, <laughs> it's a clip on mouth. Definitely <laughs> not something I would want to interact there with. Goes the hair. But then it, it, it was interesting to look at uh, the reasons why robots were developed. So some of them were developed to kind of fill a gap in the ways humans communicate with each other, actually. That's that's why this type of historic creepy robots mm -hmm. was developed, which is ironic, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of them are developed to help uh, children with autism, for example, yeah. to interact with a robotic face that to them is is clearer familiar, yeah. to interpret than the complex uh, human faces that they have. Um, I also I was uh, oh we're, oh uh, time passes when you're having fun. Um, I I wrote a lot of blog posts. I was on a roll this week, um, but I want to I just want to end with an image, uh, okay. the final image uh, for those who are looking at um, at the right. YouTube version. So. I found it on Reddit, but I, I couldn't find who originally made it. I'm pretty sure it was created with uh, Midjourney. Uh, how do I know? Uh, with a fairly recent version of Midjourney, because the hands look okay. They have five fingers, good. <laughs> um, but when you look at the shoelaces, that when you, that's where you clearly see that yeah. it's been uh, AI mm. generated. So uh, good one on the hands, uh, do better for the shoes. But what are we looking at? 
So it is uh, the concept. What we see is is a fairly good looking guy looking very comfortable, very comfortable, in something in between. A, he is in a bean bag. No. Basically, um, something in between, like a beige hoodie and and a bean bag. But the result, because it's so warm and comfy, it's also Nike branded. That's yeah. also interesting. Yeah. Um, although it's, I can't it's imagine how you can then, yeah. get up uh, and, and go running in this one. Um, but I, I would literally never leave this thing anymore. <laughs> um, and I like it a lot because it makes you look like a tardy great. And yeah. as you know, those are my favorite animals. From a, from a legal viewpoint, it's also interesting because it, it, it intersects some, some things of the, the, the recent um, trends. You mm -hmm. have the metaverse, the Web3, and now AI. Yeah all have been have an impact on for example brands in the metaverse and web3 brands will have to be approached in a different way uh, someone can design a, a, a certain type of handbag of a, a chanel or whatever um, and then it's not protected the same way as in the real world because mm -hmm. you have your brand it's protected because of the deposit you did uh, the depot but when you when the, the deposit does not mention the the digital world, yeah, obviously it's not protected in a digital world. No, but that's the small contract of an NFT. And Nike yeah, yeah, is lucky now, because they already the, have NFTs they already, in their shoes. They yeah, yeah, but they also they, the, the the big brands started filing new deposits of brands to have protection within Metaverse Web three, oh, etc. Uh, because yeah, obviously they want protection there as well. And now you can see it with AI as well. Somebody mm -hmm. just put in probably, yeah, make it Nike. Nike. Yeah. Um, I don't think Midjourney is doing this. I think that was <coughs> post-production uh, Photoshop. I'm not sure. Because um, if I do a, like a brand name, then it d d uh, there, there, there are examples. Yeah, you can Nike see it on the shoes as well, Nike in the, yeah. on the side. Um, for example, uh, Heinz uh, Ketchup actually did a campaign based on the idea that when you put in Ketchup as a text prompt, uh, the resulting bottle that is generated yeah. by Midjourney will clearly uh, look be, like be a Heinz bottle, bottle yeah. so they were very happy with that. If you're like a, a love brand like Nike is, I think it can spontaneously. Yeah, yeah um, you can use it, but also there's new challenges how to protect your brand and all other intellectual property, obviously as well. Mm -hmm. But now it's with brands, it's very clear. I, want, use your I want to send you all. If you if you look at this image, uh, there's one thing. So some of it. Uh, <laughs> refer to this as your spacesuit on Mars. And it is very <laughs> practical because one of the things that I that keep me up at night is how do you go to the bathroom when you're on Mars? Yeah. And uh, this suit has it solved because if you look at this guy, he's, he's yeah, sitting, uh, <laughs> he's on sitting a I think, on, on <laughs> best guess, four months worth of uh, <laughs> excrements, of his own excrements. Uh, uh, but it's no problem. It's no problem at all because he doesn't even smell it on. on, on yeah, watch. He's so comfortable. <laughs> he's still comfortable. It's probably a little warm. Um, <laughs> For a short amount and, of time. Uh, yes, uh, he's warm and comfortable sitting in his own, uh, in his own excrements. Looking like a tardy great. Well, that's all we have time for today. Um, um, thank you for watching and for listening. And then, of course, thank you very much. Thank you guys for thank inviting me. For Wim, uh, for giving us all of this wonderful legal advice. <laughs> and guys, for you, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. See you next week. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.